name of one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Amen. The presence of God was with the people of Israel as they wandered for 40 years through the desert wilderness. The book of Exodus tells us that during the day there was a pillar of cloud and at night a pillar of fire to lead them through all their trials. After Moses received the commandments from God on Mount Sinai, that holy cloud would remain over the tent which held the tablets on which those commandments were written for as long as the people kept camp in a certain place. When the people settled in the land of Canaan, the cloud signifying the presence of God still stayed over that tent of meeting where the Ark of the Covenant was kept. After many generations, King Solomon placed the Ark in the newly built temple. And the cloud of God's presence filled that place. In his dedication prayer before the whole assembly, Solomon recognized that no building can ever contain God. But still he prayed that God would be present to all who called upon God in that place. And not just for the people of Israel, but for foreigners as well. Solomon prayed that God would hear their prayers. The temple was to be a place of prayer for all people, a place where the presence of God could be encountered by all. Walter Brueggemann observed that this dedication prayer of, the, of King Solomon, which is much longer in its entirety than we read today, doesn't include the usual lists of petitions or requests of God. It simply expresses the deep yearning for communion and presence, which are ends in themselves. Solomon's prayer is not as much about the temple as it is about God. God answered Solomon's prayer. And chapter 9 of 1 Kings records God saying, I have heard the prayer and plea you have made before me. I have consecrated this temple which you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. In spaces consecrated by God's name, God's eyes and God's heart will always be there. Theologian Brian Peterson put it this way, the church is the sign and the promise of God's presence in the world. Churches are concrete reminders of God's presence with us and reminders too that God transcends space and time. Places of prayer are meant to provide safety and rest in the presence of God. Not just for people who look and think and act just like us. The church is to be like the temple, a place of prayer for all people. We put those words on the bulletin here at Zion, a place of prayer for all people, to remind us that this is our primary purpose to provide a place where people who yearn for communion and the presence of God can come to hear God's word and be refreshed and strengthened for the days ahead. This is a place where the presence of God can be encountered. When we pray in this space, we're reminded of the prayers of the many generations that came before us 
not only those who prayed within these walls, but the prayers of all of our spiritual ancestors who sought out the living God and listened for a holy word. That's what the disciples of Jesus found in their relationship with him. When they were with him, they came to believe that he brought them into the presence of the living God. Once they had discovered that, they could not imagine going anywhere else. But they did find that following Jesus can be difficult. In the gospel selection we heard this morning, things were getting rough for the disciples of Jesus. After the initial novelty of hearing Jesus' radical teachings, the crowds began to wander away. They didn't understand his cryptic messages about the kingdom of God or receiving a life-giving spirit. They were offended by some of the imagery he used and by his association with sinners and, out and social outcasts. Jesus was aware that even among his disciples, there were many who were complaining. Some had already left, and others no longer believed his message. Jesus then asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Think for a moment of all that Jesus shared with them. All the acts of mercy and healing they witnessed. All his words of eternal life. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Dwell in God and let God dwell in you. You give them something to eat. Abide in me. Let your light shine among others. I have called you friends. No wonder Peter said to him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. This was the first time that Jesus' core group of disciples is referred to as the Twelve. They had followed him from the beginning. And even though others had decided that they had better things to do, other places to go, other pursuits to follow, these Twelve recognized and affirmed that it was Jesus whom they would follow in their lives. This is what makes a church, not a particular worship style or denomination, not what time we gather, or even the particular building where we assemble, but a common commitment to follow Jesus, to come together in the presence of God and hear God's word. We seek out the nearness and love of God that we have come to recognize in Jesus. We recognize that it's abiding in Christ that will protect us in our wilderness times and lead us through our trials. The times we live in have been called the age of anxiety. There is much that is difficult and unsettling in our world. And still God leads us on, no longer with a pillar of cloud or a pillar of fire, but with God's presence in our midst. Let us be still for a moment and give thanks for God's presence here today.